When clairvoyants stand on stage to do a show, if there's already a ghost in that venue, can they stir it into action? We come to the Theatre Royal here in Margate in Kent. Now back from Wyfile's viewers may recall we've been here before, but this time we've got a brand new story, but with an old twist. As you're probably aware, clairvoyants do shows in theatres like this up and down the UK, but one of the country's top clairvoyants has done a show here, at this theatre, and some rather strange things happened while she was doing that show. Yvette Tamara appeared here in this theatre in February, and when she did, you could say all hell broke loose, and there were witnesses too. Well, I came along here with an open mind, but I, during the course of the second half, Yvette was on stage, you know, making contact with whoever it was at that point in the, in the performance, and I started to see the whispers of a silhouette behind her, and this came in and went out again, the whispers of the silhouette. And then about another 15 minutes later, this lady, very strongly, walked on to the stage. She she was walking, but her feet were not touching the floor properly, because I always remember she had these red shoes on, because I could see the red shoes and the white dress. An elderly lady, Victorian dress style. And she came up and she stood behind Yvette, and at that particular point of time, Yvette was really going strong at the connections that she was making. And... It was as if the lady was there feeding Yvette with information all the time. Then she faded out again. And then about five minutes later, she came back in again. And it was again as if she was trying to make contact with people in general within the audience. And that was when I felt that the, the mic started to play around as well. The sound started to behave or misbehave. There was a thumping sound or a walking sound on the sound system. You kept hearing these thumps and the te technicians at the back of the theatre who controlled the soundboard were absolutely gobsmacked. They couldn't work out what was going on. Uh, you kept, like, like someone was trying to come through on the sound system. We found out afterwards that a member of the audience had seen a Victorian lady come onto the stage, which met the description that Yvette had seen earlier on in the evening when she walked around the theatre with me, of our Victorian ghost Sarah Thorne. She was a, a drawn face, and she had grey curly hair, uh, wavy, not curly, wavy hair. And she had this long white dress on, but it wasn't a flowing dress. It was more of a dress, as I would call it, a lampshady dress. It was straightish down, and it had netting on it. It was a, um, a flimsy type of dress, but solid underneath. It wasn't see-through, and it wasn't flowing. It wasn't angelic. It was a, a strong dress. Um, her complexion was fair, and I can also see the fact, I'm just running, recalling it in my mind at the moment, she had, um, she was holding a handbag, it was a handbag, but it was, she was holding it up a little bit as well, and her lips were quite, quite bright in colour. Strange bumps and groans in the theatre are no surprise to the staff, as they get it all the time. They claim it's the ghost of Sarah Thorne, who owned the theatre. I'm quite a religious man, but um, you have to have an open mind on these things. There are, there's definitely something there, but they are friendly. We don't have any evil spirits, I must emphasise that. It's a very, very friendly theatre. In fact, the only thing I would say is anyone who doesn't like the theatre does fall foul. I've noticed that. It's uh, something that's quite uncanny. I noticed within the audience at the time there was a few gasps, so I presumed other people may have been seeing what I was seeing. But I was testing myself at the time. I was like looking away and coming back in to see if it was in my mind's eye or it was what I call reality. I was testing myself. I didn't want to say to the person, say, hey, do you see that person there? You know, <laughs> because you feel a bit of an idiot, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Well, we've seen Yvette at work and we've spoken to some of the people who've witnessed some rather strange occurrences while she has been working and Yvette is with me now. First of all, Yvette, for anyone who's never been to one of these sort of shows, what actually happens? I think it's a show that sort of 
lets people be amused and amazed because if uh, I found recently there's a lot of people that um, are skeptics and never been to a show like mine and what we actually do is give proof of the afterlife and the show is geared up to giving messages from the other side direct proof of the afterlife and there's so much information that's given now uh, that I get passed through me uh, which I can give to the audience and say I've got somebody here called my ex, whatever his name is, mm. Neil, Neil O'Brien um, he lived at number 88, he's telling me his auntie's here and her name is June. And that's how much information we get. We have to get things that are really significant. We've heard that during, certainly the show here in this theatre, there was an occurrence and things actually happened. Is that unusual? Is that common? It's happened twice to me. Two theatres I've been to. This one here, Theatre Royal at Margate, and also Theatre Royal at Lincoln. But here at the Royal Theatre at Margate, uh, which is a beautiful theatre, which has got so much history and I think it goes back to the 17th century, the Pacific Night, which was back in February um, of last year, um, we actually got here for the evening and the first half was just fine. But the second half we had lots of trouble. The, the noise that went through all the microphones was just a, a terrific quotation of bang, 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 bang. You couldn't hear yourself. It was just so horrific. And then after that, we started to find every microphone I had just didn't work. So I was sort of looking at the side of the stage to see, well, look, come on, what's going on here? And then there was everybody rushing around at the bottom of the, of the theatre here saying, you know, running around, that was important with mics, giving me mics, and we couldn't get anything to work. And yet, it should have worked. Mm. So we ask ourselves, well, what is it? Well, obviously you find with anything that's spiritual, if you have an entity that comes into the building that is so strong that it will interfere with either line, lights, anything to do with lights, anything to do with electrical. You feel this terrific energy. And when you have a spirit that comes so close, you can feel, it even makes your hair stand on it. You actually can feel the energy there. Um, and she was very much there in the background. And as I was still communicating with other spirits, where she was, I kept saying to her, come and, come and speak to me, say something you want to say. But she was very reserved, so she was a very quiet sort of lady and sort of very shy. And she didn't want to come forward. But she's just keeping an eye on me. It's like, this is my theatre, I'm just going to keep an eye on you and see what, you, what you're doing. When you consider how many clairvoyant shows there are in the UK every year, I guess it's a bit surprising that more people in the audience don't spot the occasional spirit on stage. But when you've got a very powerful clairvoyant at work, in a place that is clearly haunted, I suppose we shouldn't be too surprised that they don't stir something up. It was just an, un an unreal experience. I have never actually seen an experience like that before.